Greetings, viewer. I'd like to have a chat with you today about artificial intelligence. I know, how original. But unlike most people who seem to be only obsessed with the technology itself, I'd instead like to discuss what I find to be much more interesting. How we, as humans, will respond to it. Because believe me when I say, we really aren't ready. I'm going to start by making a rather bold assumption, and that is that sometime this century, whether it be the 2020s, 2030s, 2040s, or beyond, artificial intelligence will make human beings, for the most part, null and void. Specifically, AI will eliminate the vast majority of jobs because it will be doing said jobs instead, likely rendering a form of universal basic income necessary to prevent significant societal uproar. Now, I said this assumption was bold, except it's not really bold at all anymore, as with each passing day that AI continues to make strides, more and more people worldwide are starting to conclude that this potential future is in fact not potential at all, but merely an inevitability. Rather than argue about the specifics of when this will happen, or even if it will happen at all, let's just put these questions aside and instead play devil's advocate, and say, it will happen. Or rather, let's pretend that it has happened. It's the year 20XX, the future, and we now live in this AI-dominated world. Almost every business is ran now by incredibly convincing AI agents who have infinite patience and almost never make a mistake. Even high-skilled jobs, such as doctors, are now more trusted in robot form. Humans don't even drive themselves anymore, ever since the mass adoption of the robo-taxi. And paintings, music, movies, and even video games are now all masterfully generated to cater to the individual. If you were immediately transported into this world, you'd probably love it. You'd never have to get up for work, and nor would anyone else. Medical issues would likely be eliminated before you would even develop them and there would be no stress about money, status, or any other pre-AI dependencies. Truly, you would be just as stunned as a caveman would be if he was given a smartphone. But after a while, a thought would inevitably start to surface. What now? You'd have many years, if not potentially decades, left to spend on this Earth. But doing what, exactly? I mean, sure, you could immerse yourself in all this great technology, but... Is that it? Is that what life would be now? We exist as humans to be served and pampered by our AI minions, and that's all there is to it? I mean, I suppose the answer would be yes. Which brings us on to the first big problem that AI would bring us. Purposelessness. Our ancestors had a clear purpose in life, mostly just to survive. They had to deal with disease, famine, and war. Most people had no time to sit around and even think, for they had families to attend to, and thus had to find something they could uniquely specialise in to give them value. They had to work, and that work was their purpose. But in a world without these struggles, without work even, then what, exactly, is our purpose? This question puts most people who ponder it into a really dark place, but especially those who are creative or entrepreneurial people because it gets us to reflect on how we currently live our lives now, and how empty they'd be if what we strive for on a day-to-day -day basis was immediately rendered irrelevant. I make sociological theories that I enjoy showcasing to the world, in the hopes that they may get people to think. A friend of mine has been developing his own indie game for the past few years, with the aim to one day release it to commercial success. Another friend of mine desires to get a zoology degree so that she can become a zookeeper and look after animals. It's these things that occupy our time, springing us into action and giving us a sense of duty. And you too, dear viewer, likely have similar tales of purposeful passions. 
But one can't help but wonder if any of us would even bother meddling with such things in the first place if we knew from the start that a robot would always be better than us at it, regardless of how much we tried. Why bother making theories when an AI could make more in a second than I could in a lifetime? Why bother making an indie game when an AI could generate something personalised for every player? Why bother looking after animals when an AI could always perform better at it? Pride would instinctually have us say, of course we would bother, but realistically, challenge without reward or even recognition just isn't how humans operate. But it's not just purposelessness people will have to deal with, but also boredom. It's not as if the experiences that AI would give us wouldn't be affected by the natural diminishing returns of age. Do you remember when you were a kid and almost everything in life was fascinating? Meanwhile today, something has to move heaven and earth just to impress you a little. That's not just you getting older, it's you getting more experienced in life. And with experience comes expectation, and that expectation is often sadly met. There's a reason why people with autism tend to have obsessive fixations about things from their childhood, because nothing hits us harder than those original years. Which has even more worrying consequences when you realise that similar to how young people today mindlessly fry their brains by scrolling TikTok or YouTube shorts during such years, imagine the damage that personalised AI would do to them in the future. Then, go one step further and ask yourself how they could possibly match that high later on in life when they get bored much more easily. With endless entertainment, what we will create is a boredom crisis. And needless to say, that people who feel they are constantly bored tend not to act in positive ways, to put it mildly. In fact, it's not difficult to predict that it may well be common for adults who grow up in such an environment, despite having borderline every anemone provided for them, to start rioting, breaking rules, and going absolutely berserk, just to spice up their otherwise dull and predictable lives. Which brings us on lastly to arguably the most dangerous problem of them all. Extinction. Let's take everything we've just mentioned and bring it to its logical conclusion, and ask, why even reproduce at such a point? I mean, of course, the instinctual answer is to carry on your bloodline just as your ancestors have for millennia, but if you couldn't find purpose for yourself and were bored out of your mind constantly, then would you really optionally spread that burden onto another? Considering the average human today is increasingly willing to sacrifice their own offspring in the most barbaric way imaginable just for the sake of convenience, I think the writing is on the wall for such a question. If anything, such existential dread would be an almost perfect ethical excuse for extinction, especially when paired with the almost perfect tools to support such. Similar to today, it's inevitable that a large amount of people will become mindless perverts from being exposed to an ever-increasing ghastly amount of mind-bending personalised adult material. But what's worse is that they'll be able to simulate and affirm such desires with well-calibrated convincing androids, who will almost perfectly be suited to put up with their lack of socialisation, manners and other ill-fitting behaviours which poses not just a threat to said individual, but as stated earlier, the collective of humanity as a whole. As of the time of recording in the mid-2020s, I find that so many people are focused on the so-called singularity, the sudden burst of AI innovation that will rapidly transform the world. Yet barely anyone ponders on the thousands of years thereafter, and how we will deal with such a new baseline reality. The purposelessness, the boredom, and our very extinction. Just one of these is a civilizational ending issue, but all three is just beyond belief. So, what is the solution? Well, the instinctual response would be to just pull the plug on AI development indefinitely to prevent all this from happening. But, sorry, even if that would be a wise thing to do, it's just not going to happen. As I've mentioned in the past, back when England was going through the world's first industrial revolution, a group of workers known as the Luddites purposefully went around breaking the newfound machines that were set to put them out of business, believing that holding such innovation back was a noble and just cause for their own preservation. 
but as you may expect, no one else agreed, and they were swiftly dealt with. The fact is that humans are programmed to crave advancement, and AI may well be the ultimate advancement. Thus, it doesn't matter how much activists or even certain lawmakers try to stifle its creation, it will inevitably come to fruition regardless. For all that is possible is inevitable. Therefore, perhaps the only logical solution to the problems that AI will inevitably bring may not be to fight said AI, but to simply reject it entirely. Which brings us on to a concept that I call ABCs. Alternative Breakaway Communities. Whereas mainstream society would fully embrace AI and its consequences as expected, people within an ABC would, as its name implies, purposefully choose to live an alternative lifestyle, breaking away from said mainstream within their own artificial community. This doesn't mean the ABC would be actively hostile to the mainstream, but merely not participating in it. You know how in fictional post-apocalyptic universes there's isolated vaults you can book for you and your family to hide from the effects of nuclear Armageddon? Imagine that, but for AI Armageddon instead. Kind of like having various zones spread across the world that are akin to stepping into a time machine, whereby within such, it's mutually agreed that certain technological advances, such as AI, would not be tolerated therein. The overall point of an ABC would be to passively counteract the problems that we spoke of earlier. An ABC would prevent purposelessness, because if a human doesn't do something, then it won't ever get done. And so just like in the days before AI, all people now have a plethora of possibilities to make something of themselves by being useful within the community. All the better, the more primitive the starting point. An ABC would also prevent boredom, not just by taking up lots of time, but because there would be an internal economy that would only include products and services created from within the community, not from outside of it. Meaning that people would not be able to fry their brains from endless addictive and personalised forms of advanced entertainment, which would keep the wonder and spark of the world alive, even long into adulthood. An ABC would also stop extinction by subtly forcing people to interact and work together, and thus slowly fostering healthy romantic and familial relations, just as we have done throughout history, before technology severed such interactions. Imagine a community where everything you do has meaning, where you always have things to do, where you know people personally. That is what an ABC would be. And that, overall, sounds great. The problem with such theoretical arrangements, however, is that they are just that. Theoretical. After all, it's not like an ABC has ever been tried in reality, and thus we have no clue if they'd turn out to be a failure. Right? Well, no, actually. Because what if I told you that there is an ABC that exists right now, and has done for over a century? Those of you who have watched my production on why I believe atheism is doomed will know precisely who I'm referring to. I am, of course, referring to the Amish. The Amish are a group of Christians primarily based in the eastern United States, who broke away from mainstream society around the time when electricity became commonplace, whereby they willfully rejected its use and that of other technology in the pursuit of a more natural lifestyle and have done so successfully ever since. The Amish have been an ABC before the concept even existed, and thus are an almost perfect case study for how other such communities may perform. And fortunately, it seems like the Amish function surprisingly well. Physically, the Amish are some of the most fittest individuals not just in the United States, which isn't exactly difficult, but in the whole world, with staggering low rates of sickness and almost non-existent rates of obesity something that can likely be attributed to their hands-on lifestyle, alongside their naturally homegrown food. Mental health is likewise reportedly very stable, with low rates of crime, self-harm, and other negative characteristics, something that can likely be attributed to their tight-knit social community. Spiritually, the Amish display borderline non-existent levels of nihilism, and report being well attuned with what they perceive as a higher power something that can likely be attributed to their almost universal religiosity. 
With such high rates of life satisfaction, it shouldn't be surprising then that over 90% of Amish people choose to stay within their community, despite its technological limitations. But by far the most interesting fact about the Amish is their unreal fertility rate. Whereas the average family in the United States has just two children, the Amish have an average of eight. Meaning that the Amish population tends to double roughly every 20 years. So while there are just a few hundreds of thousands of them today, there could be tens of millions of them by the next century. A far away shot from the extinction that faces the rest of so-called advanced humanity. Now of course, many would jump to critique an ABC like the Amish as being a dystopian cultish roleplay. And yes, they're certainly not perfect. In fact, in the past, even I have poked fun at people who desire to live such simple lifestyles, primarily in the context of the culture war. After all, you can't have any influence on society if you choose to live like a medieval peasant in the wilderness. But this isn't about having influence within society. It's about rejecting said society. As with AI added to the mix, this becomes not just a matter of mere politics, but what it means to be a human being. Ask yourself this, if your internet went off and you couldn't use technology at all for the rest of the day, what would you actually do? And if the answer is nothing, then that should get you thinking. Are you really still a human, or just a slave to a series of servers? A machine of sorts yourself? Maybe you and AI have more in common than you think, because you're both intelligent, but at this point, also both artificial. Nevertheless, putting such critiques and hesitation aside, I suppose the ultimate question would be this. If you're going to reproduce at some point in the future, what kind of environment would you want your offspring to grow up in? The mainstream future to come, with all the existential problems we spoke of earlier? Or this alternative from our past that we know works well? This is a question that everyone who wants a stake in the future must ask themselves. And in my view, it's better to answer this question sooner, rather than later. The most annoying part about making this production is that I know 99% of people will just watch it, think, hmm, yes, interesting, and then get on with their lives like they saw nothing in the first place. Because of course you are. There's no way a topic of this severity could possibly be laid out and properly absorbed in 20 minutes or under. But I think everyone should take a moment to really stop and think about what's actually at stake here. People shouldn't just be sitting around like ducks, waiting for the singularity to swallow them whole. Because I think it really will shock people just how unfulfilled they'll actually feel within it. It's no secret that the 2020s, as a decade, has been terrible. Lockdowns, wars, economic disasters, culture wars, the list could go on. But I actually think that despite how poor it seems living through it, the 2020s may actually be romanticised in the future as the last human-centric decade. And if that isn't a worrying fact, then I don't know what is. Thus, before this happens, perhaps it's time for humans to go back to basics. Back to learning our ABCs.